Hey, it's Ruben in the shop bringing you a thrift haul. I was out and about picking up from auction houses today. I stopped at two thrift stores and also an estate sale. I just saw the sign. I was like, hey, let's go check that out. Uh, picked up some things, some cool things, some duds. Let's check it out. Today's theme is Batman and media. So, uh, first thing, let's talk about this. Star Wars Trilogy on VCD, so Video CD. Um, you would think that this would be from like, I don't know, the 80s or 90s? This is actually from 2000. I don't know why it's in this format. Um, I don't know what they charged me for it either. But as you can see, it's from, from Malaysia. So maybe they didn't have DVDs in Malaysia. Anyways, that's what that is. Um, I think I paid a couple bucks. I'm not sure. I picked this up. I thought it was pottery at first. And then when I picked it up in my hand, it's heavy and cold. This is actually a carved st soapstone. Um, most of the black soapstone carvings I've seen or saw when I researched them right before this video were... Um, Inuit carvings um, a lot of Canadian artists so it's a cool thing we'll see how it does I got these district attorney plaques they're really just a sticker on a piece of masonite they were a dollar each I'm going to pair them and sell them and hopefully someone will use them for a prop maybe I don't know what I was thinking here, but I saw it and it made me so happy. So this is Wishbone, uh, seven volumes, 50 episodes, fan made. These are bootleg DVDs of a kid's show that I used to watch when I was a kid. Um, I can't sell these, so I paid five bucks to have these DVDs, though I don't own a DVD player. So I don't know what I'm thinking, but they got me. They got me. Next is this Batman armor set. It's from 1990, made by Kenner. Uh, it's not complete. It has all the pieces. It's missing uh, one of these shooters. So I think it came with two, and there's only one in there. But it's still usable. It's still cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I didn't see any for sale that still had the box. And the box seems to be the, the cool part of it. Got a couple of VHS tapes. This one's Ben Folds 5. It was a quarter and it was sealed, so I just got it. It's not really worth anything. Next is this Diana Ross Out of the Darkness or Out of Darkness. I'm pretty sure this is bootleg too. <laughs> I just picked it up really quick. This 15, that's um, how they do it over in the UK. So maybe it's UK, but it just doesn't look right. Probably won't sell that. Next is a few Weird Al Yankovic cassette tapes. When I took them up to the counter, I didn't really look at them. I just saw them from the side, and I didn't realize I had two of the same one. I figured I'll pair two and sell one by itself. Not a ton of money here. I'm thinking I'm really going to get 10 bucks for the pair and then have to wait till I find another one to pair that one with. If I had four of them that were all different, maybe 20 bucks. Next is this. This is Cologne. Nightmare Before Christmas Cologne. Bone Daddy. It's in there. There's liquid in there, so. Um, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's even ever been out of there. So, they go for like 40 bucks, I think, and I paid five. They had a section. Christmas sections are now out. They had some Christmas CDs. I knew I could flip through them quick. I saw this one and knew that it would be a seller. I didn't even check it on my phone. Um, paid two bucks. I'll probably get 20 for it. If you went on eBay, you'd see someone's asking like 96, which is crazy. Um, let's go to this Batman, Build-A-Bear Batman. It was in that estate sale. It was just in a box. Unfortunately, it is missing one of his booties, but still, I think someone will pay 20 bucks for it. Um, and then this first record came out of the thrift store. It was a dollar. 
It's more of a modern record, probably from here, 2008. So it has Jack Johnson on it, Rogue Wave, G Love and Special Sauce. So I knew some of the names, so I grabbed it. It'll go into my collection. It's worth like four bucks on eBay. Okay, these records all came out of the estate sale. I had gone through the house, there wasn't much left. Um, and I had put something on the hold table and then they I heard I heard the guy running it say oh yeah yeah there's stuff in the garage you got to walk around back so I followed that instruction and went to the garage pretty empty but there were some records in there maybe four or five boxes they were asking two bucks an album uh, but today was like 75 percent off day at this estate sale the bear cost me like two bucks um and then there were these. So this was the first one I saw. Odetta. This is going to be Folk. This is a really great album. I already have a copy. I'm going to compare my copy to this copy. Whichever one's not as high quality. I will trade with a buddy with my, of mine. I got this. Um, Isle of Wright. Atlanta Pop Festival. Jimi Hendrix. Sly and the Family Stone. Miles Davis. Uh, Leonard Cohen. That's cool. It's a three LP album. It still only charged me 50 cents for it. It's not in as good of condition as I thought. Here's Judy Collins again. We're going to pick up all the Electra albums. We're going to have a full run. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to find another copy of Made of Constant Sorrow. It has a little bit of mildew on it, and I don't want that. Uh, next is the Delphonics, um, including Didn't I Blow Your Mind? Remember that one? Um, again, this one was in rougher condition than I thought, but there it is. This is Canterbury Country Orchestra meets the F&W String Band. Folk music, pretty cool, looks like a commune. Um, that's worth about 10 bucks. Next is California Dreamin', Bud Shank. I think I have this album as well. Again, I'll compare and then do a trade. This is we got Charlie Parker, Bird's Wings. I don't have this album. Excited to have it. It's in really nice shape. Um, Immortal Performances by Charlie Parker. Then the Complete Charlie Parker. This is a French import album, Volume 1. Again, really nice condition. I don't have it. It will go into my collection. And then finally, when I saw this one, I was like, huh, okay. Uh, Dorothy Carter, Waylee, Waylee. Um, when I saw this, the first thing I thought was Folk Psych. Folk Psych is, an, are albums that are, they're folk albums. They're made with traditionally folk instruments, but it was also like the psychedelic era or just post psychedelic era. So some of these get really weird. Um, and you have that psych influence fused with the folk music. So definitely going to listen to this one probably keep it i might sell it um if you went online if you went on ebay and did some comp research on this and you looked at what's for sale you got prices ranging from like 90 to 160 dollars um one sold recently for 78 dollars at auction but that one was sealed so this one is in really nice condition i Bet you if I listed it for 50 bucks, it would sell really quickly. Uh, I definitely have to listen to it first because I might find it off-putting. Who knows? Probably not. Probably fall in love with it. But excited to find that. Last day of the estate sale, 50 cents. Very cool. Um, let me get you a second table. One sec. Before the close, let's talk about this chair. This was at the estate sale. It was in the front room. Um, I walked past it a couple times, and I took a second, looked at it a little bit longer. It's a wicker chair. You can see they had it priced at $99. Um, it was 75% off, so it's only 25 bucks today. It's painted. It feels like it has just like natural wear to it. I think it is a true antique. It's still in really great shape. I have an affinity for 
children's rocking chairs from like mid-century modern era. This one would be more like 1930s, 1920s, but it's cool. So why do I buy these things? I don't know. They interest me. Here's the bottom of the seat, which I was like, that looks like a real old bottom to the seat. But then later I was looking at it and I was like, I wonder if it's a replacement seat and everything else seems not newer, but not as old as this looks, but maybe it's just looks. Um, so looks like it's in pretty nice shape. A little small for my derriere, but a cool thing nonetheless. Is it for sale? I don't know. We'll figure it out when we figure it out. Quicker than a second, this is the small stack of clothing I bought today at the thrift stores. I just discovered that one of the things I bought is kind of a super score, so pretty excited. First things first, Brooks Brothers, Seersucker, multicolor plaid, great for the spring. It's only a medium. It was three fifty. Pick that up. Gonna shoot for thirty, end up getting at least twenty. Got the Irish linen, Brooks Brothers. It's more of a pink color than in the video. Um again, shoot for thirty, end up with twenty. That will work. Three fifty. This is a Viella. That's this brand here. Made in the USA. It's a cotton wool blend. Uh, what size are you? XL. Good size. Really nice and soft. Um, maybe ask 40. Get 30. Here is a Coco Pelli uh, sweatshirt. Raglan cut. These are sewn in, so it's really done really, really nicely. Um, yeah, you see a lot of Coco Pelli stuff in the Southwest. Hopefully that's a $30 sweatshirt. It also has some stars on the back. Cool. Next was this. This has a great look. Um, 70s, 80s. It's a Sears house brand. Just a hoodie. No drawstring, which is odd. But it has the look. Good surfwear item. Uh, 35, get 25. We'll see. Next is this striped long sleeve shirt. That's like a 15, 20 year old label. I thought it was single stitch in the sh in the thrift store, but it was not. It's double stitch uh, chain. So, still gonna sell it. Still gonna get twenty bucks for it. And then, so the first thing I saw were these Levi's. Um, they are stained, but that's fine. I always recommend in the listing that they'd be great for a tie dye project. If you don't have a pair of tie dye Levi's, get yourself a pair of tie dye Levi's. These are made in the USA, uh, size 11, M, 17, 501. So there's some type of variation of the 501. They have a button fly. Okay, now the jam. You ready? Boom! There it is. There it is. This is a Marimiko designed dress for design research. So Design Research is a department store, I believe, that uh, went by DR, and they started in the late 50s. I don't know when they ended or if they ended. This dress is from the 60s. Um, Marimiko is a Finnish design house. As you can tell, I don't know a lot about women's clothing. Every year I try to add something to my repertoire. This year that edition was women's clothing. I'm more drawn to vintage clothing in general. So I've been, I don't know, I'm always looking for vintage women's dresses, jackets, sweaters, pantsuits. Great color on this. I didn't see much staining. There is some at the very bottom, like some dust staining. See those pockets on the back, which is pretty cool. Butt pockets. Um, when I bought this, 
If you're ever in a thrift store and you see something that you think is valuable or think you want to buy, or maybe you recognize it right off the bat, and like a kooky sweater, you might see a kooky sweater and be like, ooh, that's awesome. I know what that is. Go and get it. Don't just look at it and think about getting it. So there's this lady who was going down the line of dresses and she was pretty far away and I saw this dress and I was like, oh, that looks old. I, that looks like it has the feel, like you can feel it in your fingers. Um, so I walked right over to it. I looked at the label. Let me show you the label. And I was like, oh, this is some kind of vintage dress and uh, I'm going to take the dress off the mannequin. One second. So I saw this label. I was like, okay, that's an old label. I saw Finland. I was like, all right, all right. Um, I saw this DR. I didn't know anything about it. I saw the city names. Cambridge, New York, San Francisco. That usually indicates it has some age. You don't really see that anymore. Um, so plopped it in my cart. The lady who's who was also looking for clothing, she had a big pile of clothes, kind of looked at me like, where the heck did this guy come from? So it was priced at $5. They were 40% off today. So I paid $3 for this dress. Go look up Marimiko uh, Design Research. And <laughs> the prices are crazy. Uh, very cheapest you're getting these dresses for is like 150 bucks. They move up to 350 and you even got people asking $1,000 for one of these dresses. It's a cool thing. If you look at it, it's kind of like a timeless fashion, or at least it feels like it to me. I'm going to get this listed here in the next couple days. I'm going to shoot for 250 Like I said, there was that little bit of dust at the bottom. Um, it is missing two buttons but it happens to be the very bottom button and the very top button. So I don't think that's going to hinder wear at all. Exciting stuff, folks. I'm having a good day. Hoping you're having a good day. Let's talk again soon.